First, challenges regarding personal liberty. Liberty of every individual is treated as very important in a democracy. One feature of democracy is to give adequate opportunity to everyone for one's own development. In practice, in many countries we find that citizens' rights are restricted. Therefore, an important challenge before democracy is to retain personal liberty and expand it. Let us look at three limitations of personal liberty. The first one, social pressure. One stage of democracy is to grant rights to everyone through the constitution. If such rights are not acceptable to the society, they remain only on paper and, in actual practice, there are restrictions of the person's liberty. Social pressure is a big challenge before democracy. Consider these two examples. Example 1. Intercaste marriages are allowed by law. But acceptability of such marriages is very limited in the society. In fact, many people are against such marriages. As a result, a social pressure automatically builds up against intercaste marriages. Example second. Same thing happens in the case of equal rights for women. Law gives women the rights. But society is not very favorable to women taking up some type of education or specific jobs. Women's freedom gets restricted. Both these examples show how social pressure can limit personal liberty. Second limitation, intolerance. Tolerance means accepting that opinions of others can be different from one's own opinion and so allowing other opinions to be expressed. An indication of tolerance is to accept that groups having different rituals and life practices from our practices and way of life have the right to adopt their own practices. Such tolerance is a necessary component of democracy. Many a times, in the name of democracy, the views of the majority group are imposed on the minority. It is not consistent with democracy to expect that people in minority must accept the views and practices of the majority group. Possibility of democracy's success is proportionate to the extent of tolerance in the society. Conversely, if the society is intolerant, then it becomes a challenge before democracy. In such a society, the primary responsibility will be to create tolerance and respect for others' opinions. Third limitation, security and personal liberty. In recent times, world over, the issues of security has become very important. Governments have to take extra caution about the security of people in the view of organized crime and terrorism. It is the duty of the government to take measures for the security of the citizens. But, while fulfilling that duty, should it protect security by curtailing personal liberties or should it allow unlimited personal liberty and risk security? How to strike a balance between security and personal liberty? These are complicated issues. For instance, in the United States, there are no restrictions on citizens holding arms. This leads to rise in crime and misuse of arms, particularly guns. 
It is argued that therefore, there should be restrictions on arms holding. But supporters of individual freedom oppose to such restrictions. We all would like to live in a secure society. This would require tackling of criminal gangs and terrorist activities. But to what extent should we allow the security forces to interfere in our private lives for purposes of security? How much to keep a watch on people's personal movements? Should police or security forces have permission to tap private telephone conversations? Citizens have to accept some restrictions on their personal liberty for security purposes. But the issue is, if these restrictions are consistent with democracy and do they result into limitations on democracy? Second, challenges about participation. A. People's participation. People's participation is the core of democracy. It is of course necessary that the rulers should be elected by the people. But it is equally necessary that citizens should regularly keep a watch on the functioning of the government. It is expected in a democracy that citizens should develop their own views in public matters and influence the government. For this purpose, Various measures are suggested for increasing people's participation through meetings, discussions and other political activities. It is expected in a democracy that rulers and administration should give appropriate response to the participation by people. Participation by people can be of four ways. First, Electing representatives, that is, including becoming representative oneself. Second, to keep a watch on the functioning of the representatives. Third, to take interest in and participate in the administration of one's own locality. And fourth, participate in the making of national policies. A challenge before all democracies is to find out ways of increasing people's participation in all these four ways of participation. The world over, experience of democratic countries is that people participate in voting, but there are very few who participate in politics on a regular basis. Second, low voter turnout. Elections are important in a democracy because people elect their representatives through elections. These representatives decide the policies of a country and look after the administration of the country. But if all voters do not vote, how can be the elected representatives become people's representatives? In India, on an average, 58% people vote in Lok Sabha elections. Many other democratic countries in the world also experience only this much turnout. This means that among every 10 persons, 4 do not vote. If this is so, how are we going to know what these 40% non-voters have to say? Third, limited initiative by the people. What does the example of voter turnout discussed above indicate? It means that people are not very much interested in political activity. Voting is a very simple and primary political action. To take interest in politics and engage in other activities is an even distant possibility. Citizens do attend political meeting, but to take an initiative and 
discuss about government's policy, to organize people, etc., are activities in which there is very limited participation by people. How many people take the initiative in complaining about problems in their village or locality and the follow-up on those complaints? Such activities are called people's initiative. Higher the initiative, the stronger the democracy will be. But all democratic countries face this problem of increasing such initiative. Otherwise, democracy will remain only in terms of people voting and electing a government after some interval. Third challenge challenge of inequality. All societies entertain some notions of superiority and inferiority. In India, this division is based on caste. In the US, this is done on the basis of color. All societies also have such divisions between women and men and between poor and rich. When society is thus divided on the assumption of superiority and inferiority of one group, it is called inequality. What will happen if a democratic society goes on with inequality? 1. This will result into domination on the backward groups by the advanced ones. This will make democracy faulty. 2. If the backward groups continually experience that their just expectations are not fulfilled, they will lose their faith in democracy. This will produce fresh challenges before democracy. Therefore, democracy has to tackle inequality. A. Types of inequality A. Social inequality While studying diversity, we have seen that caste, religion and gender are the basis on which a superior subordinate division is made. These have an adverse impact on democracy. In order to implement democracy in an unequal society, the challenge to tackle inequality needs to be handled. If this is not done, democracy cannot be successful. Democracy guarantees political equality. For bringing about social equality, special efforts are required. In the absence of social equality, political equality may prove to be futile. In the last chapter, we also noted that groups treated as inferior, women or some castes, do not get adequate share in the country's political power. So, it is necessary to decide measures for ensuring them adequate share in power. These groups are also more backward as a result of inequality. It is the responsibility of democracy to find out ways to ensure their progress and development. These measures are expected to bridge the distance among different groups and reduce inequality. If this expectation is fulfilled, it will be indicative of the success of democracy. Second type B. Economic inequality Economic inequality too is a challenge before democracy. In a society, having poverty and unemployment, democracy experiences limitations. The objective of democracy is to achieve the well-being of all citizens. So, democracy has to take the responsibility to reduce poverty and make all basic amenities available for the poor. Policies need to be decided accordingly. Many poor countries have democratic governments. Such countries face the challenge of maintaining democracy and, at the same time, tackling poverty. In situations of extreme poverty, democracy remains only in name or it is endangered due to social rebellion. C. 
3. Regional inequality. In many countries, some regions are more developed than other regions and some are less developed. This is described as regional inequality. As a result of regional inequalities, people tend to migrate to more developed regions in order to earn livelihood and better occupations. As a result, there is pressure on the developed regions. Amenities in large cities are strained. Differences arise between the natives and outsiders in these places and lead to social tensions. On the other hand, in the backward regions, a feeling emerges that injustice is done to it and that government is not attending to problems. This may endanger national unity. Backward regions can face agitations on regional basis. Many times, the language issue is added to the regional problem, leading to a feeling that one linguistic group is doing injustice on people of other languages. Challenges arising from regional inequality can be handled by the three measures of balanced development, fair share in resources and adequate share in power. For effectively implementing these measures, democracy becomes essential. It is true that regional inequality is a challenge before democracy. But the most effective and just way of resolving that challenge is democracy itself. Fourth challenge about participation. Opportunities of participation and complex nature of governance. Why is that people do not participate in politics on their own? Running a government has become quite complex in modern times. Scope of public affairs is quite vast. Even if we are taking decisions about a small town, it involves many complicated rules and details regarding procedures. Therefore, it is not possible for citizens to spare time from the daily routine for politics. Besides, not many opportunities exist beyond voting for participation in public affairs. We elect our representatives and then they meet and discuss and make decisions. Then, ministers and officers look after all administration. In all this, after the elections, there is little scope for people to take part. Now, in our country, some provisions are made for participation of citizens at the level of village or city ward. Yet, citizens are not consulted while deciding. There is not much issues like how much to spend, on what matter, which development works to be given priority, and started urgently, etc. In case of most democratic societies, we find limited participation of citizens in spite of democracy. When political leaders and People active in politics are convinced that people should participate more in politics and in governing the society. Various measures are devised for this purpose. Political parties undertake membership, campaigns and try to involve people in party work. Various organizations organize meetings and rallies and try to communicate to the government what people think. At the formal level, that is, by making legal provisions, opportunities for participation are created. Of the four ways to participate in politics that we saw above, electing the representative, that is, by voting, requires the least time. Without disturbing our daily routine much, we can participate in voting. But, Political participation through other ways 
means that people need to have interest in public affairs and they would also need adequate free time for doing that. Such participation would also require enough opportunities. Only then people would participate in ways other than voting. Chapter 8 Challenges Before Democracy Universal Support to Democracy In last hundred years, democratic system is being established in most parts of the globe in some form or the other. Currently, democracy is the most prevalent form of government. In societies where democracy does not exist, either people are engaged in struggles to bring about democracy or the governments in such societies claim that they are democracies. In this sense, democracy has become the most acceptable form of government today. While democracy is thus expanding, people always have some doubts and questions about the functioning of democratic form of government. Whenever the country is facing any big problem, many people tend to think that it would have been better if we had some other system than democracy. For instance, when terrorist attacks take place in some place, some people say that we cannot tackle terrorism effectively because of democracy. Some people think that in times of war or terrorist attacks, government should be given extra powers by setting aside democracy. Besides, in every society there are some people having attraction for army rule. Some people also think that a strong leader is required for solving the issues facing the country and that such a leader should handle issues by imposing strict discipline. Of course, it is true that democracy is not a perfect or entirely flawless system. What distinguishes democracy from other forms of government is that flaws and weaknesses of democracy can be freely discussed and solutions can be found out. Therefore, it is possible to consider the challenges and problems faced by the democracy. Conclusion What do we learn from our discussion so far? Today, all over the world, there is much talk about democracy. But having democracy alone is not a master key or guarantee for solving all issues. Issues can be resolved if people are vigilant and government and people constantly endeavor to solve issues. Every form of government has faults. Democracy too has its weaknesses. But only democracy has the inner power to overcome these weaknesses or limitations. Because, in a democracy, citizens have the power to oppose the government. Final decision rests with the people. So, people can correct their own mistakes. Only in a democracy, it is possible to reform and transform politics, the politicians and political parties. Therefore, Though democracy may have many challenges before it, democracy also has the strength to cope up with the challenges. Many questions arising in democracy are of a dual nature. First, in a democracy, issues have to be resolved only democratically. All problems have to be resolved on the basis of law, personal liberty and tolerance. Otherwise, issues may get resolved, but democracy would not remain. Some societies have differences and competition. 
Do you remember the first lesson you learnt in political science, in book, in class ninth? There, we learnt that every society has differences and competition. The special feature of democracy is that it teaches us to handle differences instead of running away from them. Second, the other issue facing democracy is about protecting the public interest. Only a legal provision for democracy is not enough. What is needed is to democratically find out and implement policies that ensure public well-being and also tackling of inequality. True democracy means developing a mechanism for democratically protecting the well-being of the entire society. So, you are going to ask, what are the solutions for all the challenges that we listed so far? A distinguishing feature of democracy is that it does not rely much on such ready-made measures. We can study what measures have been adopted in different countries of the world at different times. From this, we can take lessons applicable for our situation. We can learn from others' experiences. But, in the last instance, every society has to find out its own remedies on each question. And this has to be done in a democratic manner. Meaning, through internal discussion, negotiations, and by taking everyone together.